Hey everyone, Jay here, and if you haven't seen part one, be sure to check out the link above. Otherwise, stay tuned, for because this is the ultimate coffee filters, and in this episode, we're going to find out exactly which are the best, which are the ones to pass on. It's coming right up. Before we begin, we're going to talk a little bit about water. Basically, what we're going to do for this tasting is we're going to take the coffee filters, soak them in hot water, and then kind of have a cupping with it. We're just going to taste the water and see, do these filters impart any kind of flavor into the water and will that affect the flavor of the coffee does it give off any aromas odors is it clear does it give color and so we're going to look at those different things as well as the flavor of the water today's test we're going to use distilled water distilled water is just essentially pure water that doesn't have any minerals and doesn't have any of the uh, colorant that you would have that would affect the flavor of the co of the water as you may have heard, you know, as you go to different parts of the country, different parts of the world, the water tastes different. That's because of different mineral contents and whatever else might be in the water supply. So what we want to do is use something very neutral that's like distilled water that will give us pretty much a, a simple baseline to see if the filters have any taste. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to set up a tasting. We've got the distilled water and we're going to get it rolling. All right, so we've laid out all of the coffee filters and put them into their own glasses, and we're going to add the hot distilled water. So we've been boiling the distilled water. We're just gonna add it now. So we've got it all laid out, everything's steeping. We've got another four minutes or so to go. We're doing a 10 minute steep. This will allow us to steep the coffee filters and then also give it time for the water to cool down so we can taste it. I've placed two controls. One is the, the same water that we've been boiling hot and then the same water cold, just as a reference point to see what the water tastes like. And then of course we use our cupping spoon because cupping is done better with your proper spoon. This one is a, a real nice one that was given to me. All right, so let's see, this is distilled water. Like I said, it feels soft, feels clean, feels a little bit sweet. So it's it's a nice neutral style. Let's see the uh, how it tastes kind of hot. We're now two and a half minutes to go. So the sweetness is uh, diminished. It's not as soft, it feels like, because, probably because of the heat. But So what we're going to do is we're once the 10 minute mark is, is reached, then I'm going to pull each of the filters out some filters are bigger than others, so the water to filter ratio is going to be slightly different. I don't think that's going to make a really big impact, but, you know, we'll see how it tastes. Still another minute. While we're waiting, you know, thanks for tuning in. I'm here to the Ono Coffee channel. We're going to be trying to bring you more coffee-related materials and information. So if you have any suggestions, put them in the comments below. We'd like to hear from, or I'd like to hear from you. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you hate. Let me know what you like. Does it sound good? Does it look good? Do you have ideas for future shows that you'd like to see? Let me know in the comments. Be happy to try to answer those and get new ideas for videos. The idea for this video was actually given to me by uh, John Piquet of Salt Lake City. He's, John's got this coffee place called Cafe de Bola. I mentioned him in, the, in one of the other previous videos. Really great operator down there, really focused on, uh, on coffee quality. Well, there we go. Probably the best coffee operator in America today. All right, so we've got our 10 minutes. Let us fish out the filters. I mean, one of the things that we presume is that the white filters won't leave any kind of coloration. And that's, that's one thing we want to, we're wondering about, like, of course, we're dealing in a, in a product called coffee and coffee is just heavily brown. So you really can't tell if there's any kind of coloration to the coffees, uh, to the liquid, because the brown just covers everything up. I kind of feel bad. It feels like I'm wasting these filters just by soaking them and not really brewing coffee in them. All 
All right, now we've got all of the filters out of the cups, and now we can just get on with the, the tasting. So one of the things you might have noticed is that we, that I didn't actually rinse the filters. I didn't want to, to rinse them because I, I wanted to see how much flavor they may really be. Like there's a lot of things that we we talk about in coffee that we kind of accept as truths. Like for example, you, we, you can rinse the Chemex filter a lot because there's a lot of paper taste to it. Or you want to rinse it out as much as possible. Is that true? I don't know. We've actually never really gotten down and dirty like this to make a heavy duty tasting to see exactly whether that's true or not. So the protocol we're gonna to follow today is basically we're going to look at color, odor, and then flavor. So let's have a look at this first one. Looks pretty clear. No aromas, no odors. This is the barista. The color of the barista looks clear. No aromas, no odors. Now we've got the Everyday Essentials. Again, looks clear. Oh. There's a... Make sure that's not my fingers. Yeah, there's definitely a different aroma in this one, in the Everyday. This one has... Gosh, I want to... What is that aroma? There's kind of like a, a, a dry macaroni kind of aroma to that one, to the Everyday Essentials. Next up is the, the AeroPress. The AeroPress looks clear. Smells clean. This is the Kono filter. Again, looks clean. No aroma, no odors. This is the Kalita 185. Oh, interesting. Again, clear. I thought I smelled something. I'm just wondering if it could be my fingers. They are washed. But I, I, I'm gonna say that's clean smelling. Melita number two. There is some kind of aroma. Not quite that macaroni of the, the everyday, but there's a little bit of something there. It's running clear also. Next up is the Filtropa from the Netherlands. These Dutch, they run clear too. Clean aromas, no odors. This is the Hario O2 100 count. No odors. Also running clear. Next up is the Hario O2 with the 40 count from the original factory. Very clear as well. No aromas. This is the Daiso 39, the uh, unwashed, the unbleached. This one I feel has a slight cardboardiness to it, but it is clear. It's clear, right? It's clear. This one is the Connoisseur, running clear. No aromas. Wegmans, the Wegmans 04, also clear. There's a little bit of a different aroma here. Maybe a slightly sweet. This is the Melita Bamboo. The bamboo, does the bamboo give color? No, the bamboo looks clear too. And no aromas, no odors. This is the Daiso 34. Nothing there, clean. Daiso 34. This is the Chemex, the Chemex filter. Clear. There's something slightly different about that one, the odor. This one is the Kalita 101. Finally, our last one. Kalita 101. No odors and also pretty clear. So, for the most part, everything is pretty clean except for the everyday. 
has that, what reminds me of dry macaroni. Maybe the Wegmans are a little bit sweet, and the Daiso 39. Maybe there's something there, but Daiso 39, the Wegmans has kind of a sweet-ish odor to it. The Daiso 39 and the Chemex, there's something, but it's really, really minute. Let's do the tasting now. First up, Kalido 155. <laughs> sweetness is there from that. The, the sweetness that we taste in the cold, still is it's there. No, no real taints or anything. The barista, clean as well. Oh, the everyday. There is definitely something to the everyday. This one definitely has. There's definitely a flavor there. It's it, it's it's very apparent actually in, in the in the taste. It's very very apparent. The aroma kind of comes off as macaroni. This one comes off as kind of this weird paper, like tomato. That's inter. That's I don't know if it's interesting. It's definitely interesting. Maybe more strange than anything else. All right, so we're going to the next. We're going to the Aeropress. Aeropress is clean. Kono is clean. This is the Kalita 185. Clean, yeah, yeah, clean, fresh, sweet. Now we're doing the Melita number two. There's kind of that, I want to say papery, but I don't know if that really describes the flavor. It's a similar papery cardboard tomato to the everyday, but oh man, you know, the everyday is definitely stronger. There's definitely um, a flavor to the Melita. It's definitely stronger in the everyday. And here's the thing, at, the, at this very moment that I'm tasting, the everyday really seems harsh. Actually, it, feel, it feels like, I feel offend, it feels offensive. But is that really mainly because everything else is so clean so far? I, I'm not sure, but it definitely you can taste it. Definitely strong here. A little bit less there. Let's continue on. We're going to the Filtropa. Filtropa. It's a little bit. There's a little bit of taint. Very, very light. So now we're going to the Hario O2 100 count. Clean, clean. This is the Hario O2 40 count. The Daiso 39. There's a flavor there. Here's the thing. So far, the everyday, the Melita number two, unbleached, unbleached, and unbleached. The 39 is an unbleached filter. They all have this similar kind of tint to it. The Connoisseur, clean. The Wegmans, so this is the Melita Bamboo. So the Melita Bamboo also has a similar character to the Melita number two, the everyday, and the Daiso 39. There's a similar tint to it. Not as pronounced, maybe. Not as pronounced. The Melita number two and the... It's probably similar. No, the Melita number two is sharper than the, than the Melita bamboo. All right, Daiso 34. That's also clean. The Chemex. Hmm. The Chemex is interesting. Actually, the Chemex, you know, after tasting most of the field, the Chemex doesn't have any real taint but it gives it, it feels like it's slightly sweeter. Strangely enough, feels sweeter. All right, and then finally, this is the Kalita 101. Oh, pleasant, that's pleasant. Now that we've tasted all the coffee filters, what do we think? We've got the everyday essentials. Man, heavy taint. Number two, Melita. Again, there's that taint, the Daiso 39. There it is. Was it the Wegmans? The Wegmans has kind of this sweet, sweeter kind of character. So did the Chemex. The Melita Bamboo had a, yeah, also another taint. Out of 17 samples, four of them have some kind of taint. It's kind of a, this cardboard tomato, like the Everyday Essentials, comparatively very harsh. The two that were kind of interesting were the Chemex and the, the Wegmans. They kind of had this sweetness, sweet character to it. The, the Chemex is a sweet, but more neutral. Wegmans, there's definitely a sweetness there. That's definitely some kind of thing that's coming across as sweet. Then from there, it's pretty much everything else is pretty much clean. 
with no taints. The rest of the field doesn't have any real discernible taste. These are the anomalies. The Chemex and the Aeropress are really kind of the, the odd ones since they, you could use a Chemex filter in a, in a pour over and you'd pretty much get the same brew as a Chemex, but they're a little bit more specialty item, more particularly the Aeropress. There. So we'll put those here to the side. The Chemex does have a nice sweetness to it. So it's very pleasant. It's probably their proprietary um, pine formula. The Aeropress is just a neutral filter. So that's great for the Aeropress. The rest though, so the Wegmans has this kind of sweetness that's very similar to the, the Chemex. So that's kind of pleasant. It's kind of, you know, strange. I mean, in that it is gonna give some kind of flavor to the coffee. So let's see here. We've got the Daiso 39, the Everyday Essentials, the Melita number no. two, and the Melita Bamboo. So here's the, here's the thing. Oh, these are the, fla these are the filters that have the taints to them. They have this cardboard tomato flavor to the water and they're all unbleached. They're all this natural filters. And you know what? It's kind of, in some ways, maybe it's kind of, you know, it's been kind of against the thinking that we've had in the, in the coffee industry that these are supposed to be better. They're more eco-friendly. They're more, you know, natural. They're not bleached, so they must be better. You know, they don't have the chlorine or, or the oxygenation that, that bleaches them out, so they're going to be cleaner. But they impart more flavor and not necessarily a positive flavor. There's the Everyday Essentials, which is kind of the ultimate of the grocery brands. And this one is, like, super apparent. It's just really kind of in-your-face cardboard tomato just kind of strange i mean you, you, you I mean you kind of hope that you know like this is this is obviously you know one of the more affordable brands out there a little more you know pocket friendly you kind of want to you kind of think that oh, all of these are going to be the same and they're all cheap and so it's going to be great you know i save a little money but man it really does have the strongest flavor of the entire field of all the filters we've tasted today it's the everyday essentials that I can't really recommend at all. You know, I mean, it's you're 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 getting a great value as far as you know your the pocket is concerned, but as far as brewing experience, man, maybe not so great value. Well, actually, maybe if you're if you're not brewing specialty coffee and you're brewing you know commercial uh, grocery store coffee, then this might actually help because you know some of that stuff is really 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 uh difficult coffee to drink and this might actually you know make it nicer i'm not saying the quality isn't there but it's definitely imparting flavor to the water which is going to impart flavor into your coffee and change the character of your coffee where the rest of them don't i mean probably the best buy is the wegmans or the yeah the best buy is the wegmans because this of course if you don't have a wegmans then it doesn't do you any good it's 100 filters and the price is very reasonable that's probably one of the, the better ones for you but of all the ones that I've, I've been tasting here you know they're all relatively similar in clarity but of them all I think the Kono is probably the best that, I, that I've tasted like the one that I would recommend the highest I'll put uh, links in the description below and that's it for today. Hopefully that helps you get a better idea for what kind of filters you want to use to make your coffee at home. Again, if you have any questions or comments or suggestions, please hit them in the, uh, the comments below. We'll have more content coming up for you with coffee. And I don't know, what else is there to tell you? There's, um, there's a lot of great coffee out there. Come buy my coffee at sprocoffee.com. I don't know, what else that, that's it, that's it. Senor Chang says hello.